fluoride. There's nothing to hide. Thank you. Andrew, fantastic. Thank you. Another very, uh, well, a very well-researched set of arguments. Thanks so much, Andrew. Summing up the case for the uh, negative team, we welcome Lauren to It's Time to Talk program. Thanks, Lauren, for coming out tonight. That's totally fine. <laughs> it's your job to sum up the case against fluoride in the local water supply. Yes. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm third speaker for the negative team, and I believe that we shouldn't be fluoridating our water. According to Professor Sashila, who is a world-renowned doctor and fluoride researcher, women who are pregnant should not consume fluoride because it puts them at greater risk of miscarriage, stillbirth or childbirth retardation. We can't expect people to buy and use bottled water for everything. Yet, if we put fluoride into our water supplies, it will cost people over $1,000 to install filters into their homes. We're already at a high exposure rate to fluoride within our toothpaste, food and air, so why would we spend more money putting something that we don't need more of into our water supplies? Keep it natural and keep it clean. The first speaker for the affirmative team touched on the fact that 60 to 90% of children suffer from tooth decay. What they failed to mention was that there is as much or even more dental decay in fluoridated communities as there is in the non-fluoridated areas. Fluoridation is not about children's teeth. Rather, it is about industry ridding itself of crude, hazardous waste products like silico fluorides for a profit. Silico fluorides are 85 times more toxic than naturally occurring calcium fluoride. Fluoride is more toxic than lead and like lead in minute doses accumulates in and can be damaging to the brain and mind development of children, producing abnormal behaviour in animals and reducing IQ in humans. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Remember that we don't need to add this chemical product to our water. We get enough of it already. Keep it natural and keep it clean. We don't want anything but water in our Port Macquarie water supplies. Thanks, Lauren. And that sums up um, a whole host of compelling arguments against fluoride in the local water supply. But here to convince you that we should have fluoride in our water supply here in Port Macquarie is Floyd Cush, who is summing up the case for the affirmative. G'day, uh, Lloyd, how are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. That's good. Now, it would help if I put your microphone up. Now, you're all ready to go. You're all happy and you've got the big task, don't you, for the, for the summing up? There you go. The floor's yours. You take it away when you're ready. Thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We, the affirmative team, believe that fluoride has nothing to hide. The first negative speaker, Nikita, has tried to tell you that fluoride as a chemical is bad for you. This is wrong because the amount that fluoride is, is administered in drinking water is very small. It would have to be 10 to 20,000 times more fluoride. It would have to have 10 to 20,000 more times fluoride in it to be poisonous. The third negative speaker, Lauren, tried to tell you that fluoride is bad for pregnant women. This is wrong because, once again, as I said before, there would have to be 10 to 20,000 times more fluoride in the water for it to be dangerous. I will now summarise our team's debate. Our first speaker spoke to you about fluoridation throughout the world and the great economic benefits of water fluoridation. Our second speaker told you about the scientific and medical facts behind why water fluoridation makes sense. He also provided solid information from academic journals that showed fluoride was having a beneficial impact. My team's final point of the evening is about climate change and how this is affecting water supplies in Australia. Over the past years, parts of Australia have been suffering droughts and water shortages. Port Macquarie has also suffered water shortages that have put residents on strict water restrictions. There is a solution to this problem that involves fluoride. This solution is water treatment. Because fluoride breaks down and destroys pathogens that water carries, it can break down all the germs in grey water so that this water can be used again. This would help with water shortages and stop water wastage. So, in conclusion, our team believes that fluoride is critical to have in the Port Macquarie water supply. Remember, fluoride, there's nothing to hide. Thank you. And thank you, Floyd. And, and that uh, concludes the debate for tonight. Well, it concludes the arguments at least. And I think that we need to now, Floyd, ask Mr Mills to come on in because he's got the hard task of deciding which 
side of the fence was the stronger argument tonight. And here he comes, he's getting a round of applause, a standing ovation as he comes through the green room tonight. I always listen to It's Time to Talk. I never miss it. And welcome back. You're listening to It's Time to Talk, where students from St. Columbus School have battled it out tonight on the topic of should fluoride be added to the local water supply. It's a contentious issue. There are many arguments for and against. But, Mr Mills, you're here to decide tonight which team had the stronger argument. It was pretty tough, I'd imagine, yeah, to no, make a choice on that. Yeah, yeah. Not easy. I thought the, the, the six students thought I spoke really well. They did. Can, you, can I just ask before you do give us your verdict there, what, sure. what year are we talking? A lot of people listening will be thinking they, they know they're from St. Columba. What year are the kids they're all, in? They're all predominantly from year nine. Mm-hmm. We have one year 10 student and one student in year 11. Okay. Is debating something that's still taught at schools these days? It's, it's um, part of the English program, and, and we ran an honours program this year in, in English at St. Columba where we looked at some debating. I mean, we, we kind of participate in the H. RIS uh, debating, which is around in Newcastle, Hunter, what's it, Hunter Region Independent Schools. Oh, okay, right. Okay, well, it's great. I think a lot of people will be pleased to hear that debating, because it gets people thinking, doesn't it? Gets kids gets kids researching and understanding how to speak publicly, and it's just, it's just I think it's a wonderful activity. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, down to business. What, what, how did we go tonight? Okay, well, basically, when you when you're marking a debate, you look at how they did in mat- matter, manner, and method. Uh, so basically, matter is what they say, manner is sort of how it's said. And method is the sort of overall structure and, and, you know, teamwork and that kind of thing. And I've got to say, it was a really close debate. I really liked Nikita's opening. I won't get too specific, but um, I have to give it to the, the negative team uh, on this particular debate by, about, just by one point only. And I really liked the way Floyd finished, but they all did a fantastic job. But I think I'm going to give it to the negative team. The negative team. So perhaps port, we have to reconsider whether we should add fluoride to our Port Macquarie water supply. Close, close Very debate. Close. One point in it. That's unbelievable. One point. There's a lot of cheering and and jeering going on out in the. In the uh, what are they going to win, Mr. Mills? Are they going to get a free ice block from the canteen or something oh, like they'll, that? They'll win our praise and a handshake when they get back to school <laughs> <laughs> and a photo opportunity. Excellent. And thank you for bringing the kids out tonight and and coaching them through this. I really appreciate it. And to all the the um, mums and dads and the people out there in the green room and the students, of course, thank you for coming out tonight. It's really much appreciated. You're listening to the. It's Time to Talk program.